Hello everyone and welcome to Building Web Applications. My name is Steve Bishop from ProgrammingMadeEasy.com. Today, we're going to be talking about tables in HTML. So sometimes we need to display data on our page in a tabular format, such as this, where we have a heading across the top, and then we have different individual cells that contain some sort of data. Let's see how we can add tables to our HTML code. In order to start out with a clean slate, I'm going to remove all of the code that we have in the body of our document. So everything that we did earlier, that way we just have kind of this skeleton HTML document. Now what I'd like to do is add a new table. And it starts, as you might have already guessed, with the table tag. So we're going to need the open and close table tags. And then what we can do is we can add table rows. So we add table rows by using the T R. And the TR element is just basically going to note a row. And a row is basically the cells going across from left to right. Now each individual cell inside of this row is going to be using the TD element. Okay, so this stands for table data. So we have a table row and we have table data inside of that row. Now you want to put each individual cell as a TD element inside of the row. So if I wanted to have three TD elements or three columns, if you will, inside of this row, then I would want to do three TD elements. Okay, just like that. Now inside of here, let's say that I'm just going to add some information. So we'll say uh, Steve, and then we'll imagine that I'm going to be doing a username for myself. So I'll say S Bishop. And then for this third column, if you will, I'm going to say these are going to be permissions. So I'm going to say administrator. Okay, so if we save this, and let's go check this out on our browser. All right, so oops, looks like I can't even spell my own last name. Let me maybe go back and fix that. That's kind of silly. B-I-S-H-O-P. There we go. Make that quick little correction. And really nothing special looks to be going on here. Uh, what if I want this to span across the page a little bit more? Well, in the table, you have certain attributes that you can set. One of them is the width. So I'm going to set the width to a percentage. And I can just simply say something like 80%. So this is going to occupy 80% of the screen. And if we just do a refresh, you can see that this actually goes all the way across 80% of the page. Now, it may not look like that, right? We only see administrator here. So it almost looks like it's only half the page. How can we tell that it goes all the way across? Well, there's this gap between S Bishop and administrator. And if you added that gap to the end of this, you'd see it goes to about here, but that's still probably not the best visualization. Luckily for us, there's another attribute on here that can give us some border. So I'm just going to use border. And we're going to set this to essentially how many pixels wide do you want that border to be? And I'm going to say one. Now this is going to go around each and every cell. So if we just go ahead and save this and refresh, now we can see that there is a border around each and every cell as well as the entire table. Okay, and you can see this goes basically 80% of the page. It goes all the way across. Now, we don't really have any headings. This is just cell data. So how do we add headings to this? Well, what we can do is before this row that contains our data, we can add another row. And inside of this, instead of saying a TD element, we use instead a TH element. So we're going to do TH. And the TH is basically a table header element. Let's go ahead and add that closing TH. There we go. So this, this cell here for TH needs to be the header for this first cell within each row. So that's going to be my name. So we'll go ahead and say name. Then the next TH element needs to be for this second cell in each row. So that's going to be my username. 
Then for this third table header, we'll go ahead and set this one to the permissions. So we'll say permissions. And there we now have a table header for each one of the cells in my row. Let's go ahead and save this. Once again, go back and refresh. And now you can see that the header has a couple of different properties than what we see in each one of the individual cells. First of all, we see that it's actually bolded. It's a little bit larger than what we have inside of each one of the cells. And also you'll notice that the heading is in the center. It's in the middle of the cell. So it's not all the way to the left like our table data is. This kind of helps with kind of identifying that this is in fact a heading and not some sort of data within the table. Let's add a few more rows just to make this look a little bit better. So we're gonna do a TR element. If I can type correctly here. <laughs> and let's add some TD elements. So I'm gonna go TD and I'm just gonna to try to make this go a little bit faster. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste two more times. And then I'm just gonna copy the entire row with TD elements to make one more. Let's just format this here. There we go, there's the formatting. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna add some data to each one of these. So let's go ahead and say uh, Jermaine, and we'll say his username is JTP. Then we're gonna go ahead and say uh, permissions are user permissions. Then we'll add one more here. We'll say this is gonna be Samantha. And Samantha is going to have, you know what? There's not gonna be any name for Samantha. And then we'll go ahead and say, so there's no username because she's actually going to be a guest. So there's no actual username. Let's go ahead and save this and refresh. And there we go. Now there's one thing that I'd like to show you. And that is you can kind of break these lines. So that, let's say that I wanted this JTP to uh, be both the username for Jermaine and Samantha. I know that doesn't really make much sense, but I just kind of want to show you how to get rid of this line here for the username. This is actually what we call a row span. If I wanted to say this cell actually occupies both of these rows, then what I can do is I can go up to this JTP here and I can say that this TD should actually be a row span of two. So that JTP username should span two rows. And if we save that and refresh, we'll see the JTP goes here. Now this is causing a lot of confusion on it, right? Our guest is all the way over here. That's really kind of weird, but that's that kind of makes sense if you think about it because we've got this TD that's occupying a, a table data down here in this row, which means there's a total of four TDs down here. So I would actually need to get rid of this one in order to make that work. So if we save that and refresh, there we go. That looks a little bit better. Now we can do the same thing for column span as well. So let's say that I wanted to do, instead of row span, I'm gonna do call span which stands for column. So if we do that, and I'm, I'm gonna say, uh, actually, let's do it down here for Samantha. I'm gonna get rid of call span here. And I'm just gonna say the name Samantha should have call span, because that makes a little bit more sense. So that way, when we're looking at it, this Samantha line will, have, will be for both the name and username, right? So it just kind of breaks this line right there and makes it all one cell that probably makes a little bit more sense. We'll move JTP back to where it should be with its own cell. We'll save that. And because we have this call span here saying, this TD spans two columns, we should see that now Samantha spans both the name and the username. So if we wanna do that, if we wanna kind of make it so that one cell actually occupies more than one of these cells, then that's what you do. You either use a uh, row span if you want them to jump to to break this line here between the uh, the two rows, or you use call span if you want to make them span more than one column within the row. All right, there's one last thing that I want to show you, and this has to do with semantic tags. It's something that you 
often want to do with your HTML code is kind of designate certain sections. So for example, I'm looking at this and I can see TR and TR and TR and TR. So this really doesn't have any good separation between the table rows that are for my headers and the table rows that are for my data. What we can do is on a table, we can use what's called a semantic tag of T head for all of the rows that make up the head of this table. So I'm gonna move this closing T head tag down to below this first table row. And we'll just kind of format this, make it look a little bit nicer. And then for the body of my table, I'm gonna use the T body and then make this closing T body tag down here at the bottom. There's also a T foot, but I'm not gonna show you that. You can probably imagine what it does too, but it's basically a way of adding a little bit of a header row if you, or a footer row if you wanted to, to your table. Okay, let's go ahead and save this and refresh. And really nothing has happened, right? That's because there hasn't really been anything that's changed as far as what we see on the page. But from the perspective of a developer, this makes it look a lot cleaner. I know what is the head of the table and I know what makes up the body of the table. So there you go. That's how you can add a table to your HTML. Special thanks to these members who've signed up and become members of Programming Made Easy. Your contributions help the channel grow and I really appreciate it. If you would also like to be a member, all you have to do is click on the join button, either on my channel or below this video. Now, unfortunately, some of you may not be able to see that join button because you're in a country that doesn't have it available. That's okay. Thanks for thinking of me anyway.